From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only news program that gives you all the super news all the time. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Greetings, Alpha Citizens. For Alpha City News, this is Craig Allen. The supervillain team known as Sleepworks struck hard this week in the Diamond District. According to sources, Sleepworks leader The Oneromancer managed to use her dream powers to draw closely held secrets about the security surrounding a number of diamond dealers from their own sleeping bonds. This allowed the remaining members, Nod, Sleepwalk, and Shut-Eye, to undertake the actual theft. Nod caused passers-by to fall into daydreams, keeping them from noticing the robbery, while Shut-Eye caused the workers and guards to fall asleep, clearing the way for Sleepwalk to literally sleepwalk through the security doors, using skills gleaned from the sleeping managers and programmed into her by the Oneromancer. Fortunately, one of the security guards possessed a metal plate in his skull, installed to replace missing bone after a terrible car accident some years ago, and this allowed him to remain awake just long enough to sound the alarm. Although Alpha City police responded quickly, they found themselves overwhelmed by the coma-inducing powers of the villainous foursome. Two of the responding police vehicles crashed when Shut-Eye put their drivers to sleep, while the remaining officers became lost in reveries concerning childhood, wished for riches, and possible bright futures. With the ACPD special response team engaged elsewhere, the escape of Sleepworks with millions of dollars in uncut gems seemed certain. Upon exiting the last robbed building, however, Sleepworks found themselves faced by the full might of the Spectrum Corps their most persistent heroic adversaries. Far from making a clean getaway, the Oneromancer, Nod, Shut-Eye, and Sleepwalk found themselves face-to-face with Rocket Red Glare, the Orange Bowler, Yellow Fever, Green Machine, Blue Rose, Indigo Haze, and Violet Ultra. The enmity between these two teams goes back to before either group was even formed back to the late 1970s, when villain the Somnambulist, whom Sleepworks claims to be the children of, fought time and again against the heroic Polychromatic, with her light-based powers of flight, energy casting, and illusion, and her partner Spectrum Helmet, who used a super-scientific cowl to pick up clues and see things beyond the scope of normal man. In their last battle, the Somnambulist, blind after years of being exposed to stroboscopic attack, managed to lock both himself and Polychromatic into what seems to be eternal slumber. Spectrum Helmet, whose real identity has never been revealed to the public, retired from heroic activity almost immediately afterwards. But in the years between when the Somnambulist fell sleeping and when those claiming to be his children appeared to vex the world, Spectrum Helmet was not idle. The Spectrum Corps have all spoken about being taken in by the Elder Hero, uh, who helped mold them into the force for good they are today. With the appearance of Sleepworks, and their almost immediate confrontation by the Spectrum Corps, the war between slumber and color entered its second generation. The latest battle looked to be a slam dunk for the Spectrum Corps, outnumbering their enemies by almost two to one. But when the fracas ended, the Spectrum Corps only had Nod in custody, although they did manage to keep the other three from taking almost the entirety of their ill-gotten gains. Apparently, the Oneromancer and Shut-Eye had managed to put all of the Spectrum Corps to sleep, causing them to dream of an easy victory. Only Green Machine proved immune, and it was he who managed to capture Nod and secure the lion's share of the diamonds. Though disappointed that their enemies had managed to escape, the Spectrum Corps assured the people of Alpha City that the remaining members of Sleepworks would be brought to justice with all due speed. 
It was a strange day Friday for magical warrior Princess Littlepaw. The sailor suit clad heroine and her robotic companion Sparkles had just triumphed over Little Puff's enemy Dr. Hare when a meteor fell screaming out of the sky, striking the princess on the head. It quickly became apparent that the blow to the head had a most unfortunate effect on the princess, for no sooner had she regained her feet than she released Dr. Hare from his manacles, declaring that... Far from being taken to jail, magical warrior Princess Little Puff was joining Dr. Hare on his lifelong quest for the triumph of evil and meanness. The bad rabbit, with the help of Princess Little Puff, quickly scattered the crowd of shocked police and civilians. Over the next hour, the robotic sparkles followed his mistress and Dr. Hare as they spread unkindness and chaos all over the city, popping the balloons of small children, knocking ice cream cones from people's hands, melting tires at many intersections and causing traffic jams all over the city, and stealing the hats of many police officers. When the newly evil warrior princess came upon the head of the city parks department, addressing the gala opening of the newest expansion of the Kirby Park Zoo, she not only released all of the animals, but also put cages around the humans and hung the park's director over a pit of man-eating lions. Cackling all the while, Dr. Hare was then overheard telling Princess Littlepuff that they should throw a man named Steve off of Conundrum Tower, the tallest building in the neighborhood, as revenge for Steve having made fun of Dr. Hare while pelting him with water balloons back when they were both children. And so Little Puff's robotic companion came upon Dr. Hare, the princess, and Steve, now grown into an adult, at the very top of Conundrum Tower. Dr. Hare mercilessly mocked Steve, throwing water balloon after water balloon at the man, while Little Puff used her magic staff to freeze Steve in place. Sparkles pleaded with his friend to stop helping the horrid Dr. Hare with his reign of nastiness, but the princess merely laughed and, with a flick of her wrist, threw Steve from the top of the building. Sparkles leapt forward, trying to catch the falling man, but only succeeded in tripping Little Puff. Wonder of wonders, though, tripping his friend caused her to knock her head once more, and when she rose again to her feet, it was instantly obvious that magical warrior Princess Little Puff was now back on the side of good and rightness. In a split second, the girl Wonder had leapt over the side of the building herself, flying downwards to catch the still-falling form of the unfortunate Steve. Settling Steve gently onto the sidewalk, Little Puff wasted no time at all, but in a flash raced back over the path she had taken earlier in the day. She re-caged animals, freed the park director, changed many tires, returned many hats, and gave out many new ice cream cones and balloons to citizens she had taken them from so very recently. Magical warrior Princess Little Puff was last seen, along with her companion Sparkles, apologizing profusely to Steve and offering to fly him back to his house. Dr. Hare unfortunately made his escape, and his whereabouts are unknown. You've been listening to Alpha City News. It's produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds were provided by newsbeds.com. You can see us on Tumblr, at Twitter, on iTunes, and on Facebook under the name Alpha City News. You can email us with questions, comments, or suggestions, or if you just want to say hi, at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening, and until next week, we hope you have a super day.